On April 27, 2011, one of the most prolific tornado days ever recorded unfolded. 216 tornadoes touched down over a 24-hour period, killing 316 people. This is part one of a series about this day, and today we'll be discussing one of those tornadoes, a long-tracked EF5 that tracked for 132 miles through Alabama and Tennessee, killing 72. The tornado devastated the towns of Hackleburg and Phil Campbell in northwest Alabama, producing some of the worst damage ever observed. We'll discuss the setup, tornado, and impacts. We'll also see how the towns have recovered and how they look today. April 27th is one of those days where if you ask any weather enthusiast, they will know about it. It's one of the few super outbreaks, which is a title that is rarely given to an outbreak. Super outbreaks are tornado outbreaks that are generational and are so devastating and prolific that they're given their own special category. The setup behind this day was dubbed the most conducive for violent tornadoes ever recorded. Everything about this day screamed violent, long-track tornadoes. Just to point out a few things, take a look at the sounding from Birmingham at 18Z. The classic loaded gun skew T is present, as a capping inversion is followed by extreme levels of instability, and rich moisture is also present in the lower levels. The hodograph screams intense tornadoes, as over 500 meters squared per second squared of low-level storm relative helicity is present, a worrying amount. The SPC would issue a high risk with a 45% hatched risk for tornadoes, and a PDS tornado watch would be issued with an above 95% chance for all hazards, the first of its kind. The NWS and SPC were sounding the sirens for this event as it was nearly the perfect setup. Everything was in place for a long-lived outbreak of violent tornadoes. The first significant tornado of the day was in Philadelphia, Mississippi. The EF5 ripped up two feet of soil and killed three people. The first violent tornado in Alabama was the Coleman EF4. It tore through Coleman and Arab, killing six people, and devastation was widespread across Coleman County. Around 3 o'clock p.m., a supercell moving into Marion County in western Alabama was attempting to produce a tornado, and just five minutes later, it dropped the longest track tornado in Alabama history. The tornado initially touched down at 305, west of Hamilton in Marion County. For the first 15 miles of its track, it produced mainly weak damage to trees, but was slowly intensifying. The first sign of violent damage was apparent as a home was destroyed at EF4 intensity. The tornado continued to strengthen, reaching EF5 intensity shortly after as it swept homes and businesses clean off of their foundations with the debris being thrown quite some distance, and trees were also debarked. Just a few minutes later, the tornado entered Hackleburg violently. Extreme damage would be observed in the town as many homes and businesses would be destroyed at EF5 intensity. A large strip mall would be demolished as the tornado roared through. Hackleburg High School would experience major damage as the roof and many walls would be destroyed. Widespread destruction occurred across a three quarters of a mile wide path as the tornado tore straight through the center of the town. 19 would lose their lives before the tornado would leave Hackleburg. Just northeast of the town lied the Wrangler Jeans plant. This plant was built to withstand a direct hit from a violent tornado. People soon learned that the plant was not able to withstand a violent tornado as it was completely demolished. Miraculously, no fatalities occurred at the site. The tornado would continue northeast, producing more extreme damage. The National Weather Service in Huntsville would issue a tornado emergency for the areas in the immediate path, indicating that a violent tornado was on the ground. Next in line was Phil Campbell, a small town of about 1,000. The tornado tore straight through the center of the town, destroying over 60% of it. Homes and businesses would once again be heavily damaged or completely demolished. A strip of pavement would be stripped and tossed straight off of the road. The 25-foot section was found one-third of a mile away. The concrete roof of an underground storm shelter would be ripped off, and major ground scouring would be observed all across town. Tragically, 27 more fatalities occurred as the tornado would track through the town. The tornado would go on to destroy many well-built homes along County Road 82 before crossing into Lawrence County, still at EF5 intensity. The next community in the path was Mount Hope, a small unincorporated community. The tornado would strike the northwest side of town, destroying almost every structure it hit. Well-anchored homes would be destroyed, leaving in some cases a bare slab. Five more would lose their lives. The tornado would cross over primarily rural and forested areas, but mobile homes would be impacted at EF3 intensity. The tornado would re-intensify to violent status as it would impact more well-constructed homes, blowing them away. A car would be mangled beyond recognition and tossed over 200 yards from its original site. 
a restaurant would be destroyed before the tornado would cross into Limestone County. The Browns Ferry nuclear power plant had to scram all three reactors due to an external loss in power. The southern side of Tanner, a town that was hit by two F5s on April 3, 1974, would experience, quote, near EF5 level damage. Like the rest of the path, homes and businesses would be swept clean off of their foundations. A home on Rosie Road would be swept clean with its debris being tossed a considerable distance. For the next 15 miles, it would destroy many of the structures it impacted at EF4 intensity, although gradually weakening along the way. It would then cross into Tennessee at EF3 intensity, severely damaging several buildings, and finally at 5.40 p.m., after tracking for over 130 miles, the tornado lifted in Franklin County, Tennessee. The tornado left utter devastation in its wake, as it destroyed hundreds of homes, businesses, and other structures. 72 would lose their lives, making this tornado the deadliest in Alabama history. The total cost of the tornado would sum up to $1.29 billion, landing it in the top 10 costliest in American history. Hackleburg, Phil Campbell, Tanner, and many other towns experienced extreme damage, leaving devastation for the residents. It's been nearly 13 years since this devastating outbreak, and the towns have been cleaning up and recovering. Both the populations of Hackleburg and Phil Campbell have increased since 2011. Hackleburg rebuilt their high school and is now a small high school within the community. Phil Campbell had an event in which Phil Campbells from around the world came together to help the town recover. I'll leave a link in the description if you'd like to learn more. This is part one of a series I'll be making on April 27th, 2011. If I made a single video on this day, it would be hours long, so I'm breaking it up into multiple parts. Stay tuned for the other parts. Before I end this video, I would like to thank you all for watching. This took a lot of time and work, so I appreciate you watching until the end. If you at all found this enjoyable or informative, please consider subscribing as it helps me out a lot. Also, I have linked down in the description a lot of sources that have a lot of good information on the outbreak if you'd like to learn more. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you later on MediaCube.